Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios, as always, and today we're going to be taking another look at HitFilm Express. Today we're going to be talking about um, tracking within HitFilm. That way you can add different special effects within your footage. <laughs> Okay, so there's a few things before we start in item tracking within HitFilm, or point tracking, or just tracking, whatever you want to call it. Um, first, you're going to need some stock footage, of course, something in your background, or whatever your special effect of that footage that you want to do, okay? Um, I do have a little, small little clip of just a panning from, you know, left to right, and then, of course, your special effects is what you're going to, you're going to need to um, parent to those, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So I've actually got some stuff that I've gotten from Footage Crate. They're a wonderful thing, wonderful place to get um, different special effects, buttons, ribbons, a whole bunch of different things. If you're going to be doing YouTube videos or if you're going to just be, you know, doing this for fun, go ahead and head over to Footage Crate. Um, I'll put a link down in the description below. There is a ton of stuff on there that you can get for free after registering. Um, and then there is a, uh, a small fee if you want to go to the pro version and get all of the content. Um, I highly recommend that because it's got a lot of really useful content. So getting into um, tracking within HitFilm, the first thing we're going to need to do is take our stock footage that we've got, which is um, this one here. It's going to be about eight seconds long, so it's not terribly long. Um, and we're actually going to make that a composite shot because you can't do any tracking in HitFilm in your editor timeline. You have to do it as a composite shot. So it's going to bring up, you know, right click on the on the footage. Click composite shot. It's going to bring up the composite shot properties. Um, I recommend just leaving everything the same here, especially the frame rate. The higher the frame rate, of course, the more frames you're going to need to track your item through. So if you're doing 60 FPS, then it's going to take, you know, 60 frames for every second inside your video. So if you do the math, that's a ton of time that you're spending doing that. So for this little project, we're just going to keep everything at default. We're actually going to change the name to fire just to keep it simple so we know where it's at. Okay, so now that we've got our composite shot made, we're actually going to bring the um, drop down menu underneath. We're going to go to tracks and we're going to hit the little plus sign. Over on the right side or wherever your workspace is set up, it will. Sh um, if you don't have the track window on your default workspace, if you've changed that, um, it will, sh you know, pop up somewhere on within your workspace so you can so you can um, start tracking. Okay, so we're going to bring this out just a little bit so we can see everything there. Um, and this is your tracker. You know, there's step one, step two. It's really simple, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom in because this is our, our tracker here. And if you click on this, you'll notice that there is um, three elements to this tracker. There's a green box, a red box, and then a single point in the center here, okay? You can change the size independently of the green and the red box. And then you can change the location of the point, okay? HitFilm is going to try and locate the parameters that you set or basically the point within this green box. Every time a frame, so the next frame, it will automatically look for whatever's inside this red square in this green square. Basically, it's just a tool to help um, hit film, find what you're tracking. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this over to this little um, bowl or pot, I guess. <clears throat> and before we do that, let's go ahead and play our stock footage so you can kind of get a, uh, a, a feel for it. Please don't mind the audio. We're actually going to take the audio out of it. Um, there was some construction going on across the street. So, of course, pretty low resolution because we're just looking at it in the trimmer. You know, just simple left to right, you know, nothing fancy. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a little fire inside that little pot there. So um, what we're going to do is try and track the top of this little little ceramic bowl, okay? So we're going to keep our green square about that same size so hit film can look for this little point. We're actually going to change the size of this guy here. And let's go ahead and put our point about the center of that. Actually, we're going to bring that down to about here. That way HitFilm can locate, um, you know, the difference in color is basically what it's looking at. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go over and under step one, it will show the type. If you drop this down, you can either um, track a single point or a double point. The double point is going to allow you to track for rotation and scale 
um, within your stock footage. We're going to keep it on a single point because that's all we're doing now. Um, and then optical flow and template match. Um, optical, and those are different methods on how HitFilm will track um, your, your points that you want within the stock footage. Just leave that method as optical flow. Under the options tab, we're going to bring that up, and this is going to show us um, the error tolerance. Um, and basically what that's going to do is what percentage of, you know, basically the smaller percent of the error um, hit fill will stop tracking because, you know, sometimes that tracker will, you know, fall away a little bit and it'll, you know, come off of what you're trying to track. So hit film will stop tracking and be like, hey, you know, is this still where you want this marker? Um, and so I, the default is 25%. Um, we can go ahead and change that back to 25. That's not a big deal. I was just doing a little bit um, more in-depth tracking and I needed that value to be a little lower. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then this is our, your controls here. You can either, and the nice thing is, is about HitFilm, you can track forward and backwards. And so if you're tracking something at the middle of your video and that object is not in plain sight and really clear, at the very beginning, you can actually go to the center of your timeline or the center of your video, put your tracker, set it up, and then track backwards until the beginning of the video, come back to where you started tracking, and then track to the end. So you don't have to start from the beginning and track from left to right. You can you can track at any point inside your video, okay? So these little buttons up here is going to track back and forth one frame at a time, or you can play it back and forth and just let hit film do its thing. So let's go ahead and do that and see see what happens. Um, and if you're going to be tracking multiple points, um, I highly recommend naming the type of tracker so you can come down here, hit rename and name whatever you want. We're only gonna have the one track point so we're not gonna worry about naming it for right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so we can follow this all the way across the screen. That's too much. If you want to go back, just hit this drop down menu, go scale to fit, and it'll bring it back to the, uh, the scaled version here. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how it does tracking through the video. It's actually doing fairly decent. It's not coming off too much. Um, of course, you can hear that beeping in the background. I'm sorry for that. These little blue X's that you see are actually each frame it's tracking through, okay? It does look like it's tracking towards the right side of the bullet, but that's okay. We can we can fix that. It's actually doing fairly well, um, and I just zoomed out. Okay, so the track is over. It didn't look like it stopped at all. It did come off of the center of that just a little bit. Basically, what I was saying is every single one of these blue X's is each frame, and within that frame, it puts down a little blue X saying, hey, this is where your track point needs to be at this point in time, or this is where the um, special effect that you're gonna be putting in, this is where it's gonna show up within that frame, okay? Um, and if you add all those frames together, of course, you get an animation. So now what we need to do is we need to parent that tracking point to a specific object. In this instance, what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here, click New Layer, and go to Point. And what that's gonna do is just gonna add a point within our timeline so we can you know, parent that track to that point. So we're gonna bring that down to the bottom, go back into the viewer, highlight a tracker, and then go over here, and then of course on step two, it's gonna be when we're gonna do that. Um, the purpose is it transforming because we're gonna be using a special effect. If you click that drop down, you can actually stabilize as well. So if you've got really shaky video or if you're shooting footage that you need stabilized, it needs to you know, be stationary, what you can do is you can track a specific point like you know the end of this chair or the corner of this door to parent that to another point so it will stabilize your video. It'll, it'll stop the shake. And basically what that does is it actually just trims off the excess um, movement on the outside of basically the borders on your video. Um, and so we're actually just going to keep with transform and then we're going to um, parent that to the new point and then the X and Y position of course because we need it to be you know within this um, plane and then click apply. It doesn't seem to do anything, of course. It's not going to tell you, hey, you know, this is done. Just know that you've now parented this tracking point with this new point, okay? So now what we're going to do is we need to put in our special effects. So let's go ahead and drag this back to the beginning, okay? And we're going to zoom in just a little bit because we want to put that little fire inside the top of this, okay? So let's go ahead and let's play this one. 
yeah, that looks that looks about right. We can we can make that work. Okay, so we're gonna throw this in at the top because we want that to be on the front. We want we want it be, to be the top layer because if it was you know the last layer, of course, it would be behind your footage. Um, and so what we're gonna do is zoom out just a little bit, and we're gonna make this nice and small so we can you know fit that. I'm gonna drag it over to the top of this, just like that. We're going to position it where we want it, how big we want it. That actually looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and leave that just like that, okay? Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this drop-down me menu here, and we're actually going to parent this to the new point. So what that's doing is that new point is parented to the tracker, okay? And so now the footage that we just brought in is now parented to the point, okay? And it all just trickles down. Um, and so now let's go ahead and zoom back out and see how we did. So let's go ahead and hit the play button. It actually stays in the right position. That actually doesn't look too bad. Um, of course, we're going to take that audio out because it sounds terrible. Um, it did move just a little bit, but that's okay. Um, to refine that, to re kind of retune that, what you can do is actually go back into your tracks and then go to the layer and highlight your tracker. And what you can do is you can retrack where those are. You've already parented that to the point and so what you need to do is you need to delete that point and redo that. Um, I, I recommend of course doing that before um, you put in any of your footage. Go back in, make sure those little X's are right where you want them. Um, you can change them and manipulate them on um, frame by frame and you can do that by just clicking forward and backwards on these frames just to see where those points are. So basically what we would do is see how that point moves when you drag your frame around. We're going to put that back because we don't want to change that. So we can move that marker there. And so to go to the very end of our video where the tracking stops, what you can do is you can drag this back over to the center and go frame by frame. Um, actually, we're at the back. We're at the end of the video. So you go forward. And what it does is it removes this point and puts it in the new location, okay? I'm not going to do that for this one. I was just showing you, you know, how to do that to kind of fine-tune, you know, frame by frame. If hit film doesn't keep that point right where you want it automatically through its through its process. So let's go back to our viewer so we can get our um, fire footage here. We're actually going to drag this back just a little bit. What we want to do now, though, is we want to put in a little bit of a little bit more effects. Let's put some smoke in. Um, just to give it that extra. Let's see how this one looks and see if that's going to work for us. Um, you know, I don't know. What about this one here? I grabbed a couple of them just to kind of see how it would do. And actually, I think that first one is going to work a little bit better for us. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it in between the fire and the um, background. That way, the fire is seen um, a lot better than... Or the fire is seen a lot better than the smoke. Okay, so let's go ahead and play that and see where we're at with the smoke. Get it to a point to where it, where it looks decent. And so now what we're going to do is just like with the fire, we're going to make that a little smaller. We're actually going to put that right about there, I think. Make it just a wee bit smaller. Just like that. Just align those up. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the transform tab under our smoke. And we're going to turn the opacity down just a little bit just to give it, we're actually going to go to 40%. That's where it's a little transparent and it just gives it just a little bit. Maybe that's just a little too dark or a little too light, excuse me. Move it back to where we need it. Um, let's go, let's do 50%. That's a little better. Just to give it just a little, a little bit extra, okay? Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring collapse all these. It looks like this smoke isn't quite as long as we need it. Um, and it looks like I think that's going to work. I think that'll be okay. All right. Of course, we moved it, and now it's not in the center because I forgot to, to parent it. So we're going to go here. And then our smoke is going to be parented to the fire. Okay. So now what that's going to do is our tracker is parented to the point, okay? And that point is now parented to the fire and then the smoke is parented to the, or uh, and then the smoke is parented to the fire as well, okay? And so that should move right along with our fire here. So let's go ahead and play through it just real quick just to kind of see 
how it looks. That looks great. That really looks good. All right, wonderful. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our editor and we're going to go to our fire. So our composite shot is now over in our media tent panel. We're gonna drag that in. We're gonna blow it up just a little bit. Right click, unlink it. We're gonna go ahead and delete the audio track. We're now going to come in and add this track here. And we're gonna trim that right there. All right, so now what we're going to do is what I that the sound that I put in was just some some fire sound. We deleted that noise in the background. So go ahead and play that. That's not bad. I mean, it doesn't sound too realistic, but I think that's okay. So let's go ahead and export that and take a look at how we did. We're going to go ahead and export contents and start exporting. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this and see how we did. Go ahead and hit play. It's not too bad. The fire is a little off-centered and it could be moved a little bit better, but I think you guys get the gist of it. Thank you for watching. If you guys want to see anything else on HitFilm Express, you want to learn something new, please hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and we will see you guys next time.